Ahora todos es section 6 y 8, right? 6.8. Now we're working with a kite. So a kite right here is a four-sided shape. Now, if you never owned a kite before, you need to start doing it because it is fun. So what it is is that oh, you have this little tail thing right here and then there. I mean, generally speaking, uh, people at attach stuff to it, but bows is usually what is represented by, and then you have yourself right here flying the kite, and the wind blowing away, and then it glides up into the air, it is very fun. So usually this is um, the shape of a generic type of kite, although you can fly many types of kites. It's four-shaped, four-sided shape, so that is a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral, excuse my handwriting. Uh, with two pairs of sides congruent. Basically, this one is congruent to this one. So they're right next to each other. So what do you call something that's right next to each other? Consecutive. So with two pairs of consecutive sides equal. This one pair, this is the second pair that is the same. All right. Um, draw the lines of symmetry. So the lines of symmetry is, uh, it would be one of the diagonals. Okay, one of the diagonals. Certainly it's not going to be this one because when you fold it this way, it lands like right here and it doesn't map to this vertex. So it has to be uh, the vertical one. Let me try and find my uh, ruler. And then I'm going to fold it along this line. Okay, so that is my diagonal, that vertical line. Next, mark the congruent segment angles on the diagram on the right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to do it. So I actually am just going to redraw my own diagram because I don't want to mess with the picture because we might need it for something else later. Okay, so redrawing the, the, uh, I'm redrawing the diagram and then I am uh, putting in here my diagonal, my line of symmetry, and where I'm, I'm going to mark congruent segment and angles. Here, this one is congruent to this one, this one is congruent to this one. What else, right? What else? Also, the inside are also congruent, and also these ones are congruent. So let's give this one one tick mark on the angle, and then two tick marks on the angle. Or oh, actually, you know what? I'm just going to do the bubbles. So here, one and one, and then two and two. That's a lot easier. So two little bubbles. Okay, so to mark that they're congruent. And then what else? Uh, we, so, I, I almost said the answer. We already, these are the givens, basically. Uh, these are givens because uh, they're right in the middle, so uh, the ref, uh, reflection is congruent. But what else? After the given, you have to do the assumption. Uh, what makes the figure congruent? It's either by reflexive or by vertical angles. We don't have vertical angle, so it's reflexive. So let's put three tick mark right here. So what do you know about uh, KIE? This is KIE and TIE. What about them? Are they congruent? Yes. What are they congruent by? Side, side, side. Also, what? Um, side, angle, side. Yeah, side, angle, side. What else? Um, angle, angle, side. Now I put a prime right there because it's just for me to indicate that that side is not in the middle. Uh, you could also say that it is side, angle, angle instead. So that's what's going on in that picture. Alright, so next one. 
a uh, draw diagonal KT. So now I'm going to draw this diagonal. Label the point where the diagonals meet as S. So this one is S. Um, okay, so we did that. What conclusion can you make about the triangle um, KIS? Right? Oh, I forgot to put this in. So I'm just going to put this in. We have two bubbles and then two bubbles. Right there. Okay, so. Oh, and look at this. Um, reflexive part is also congruent. Since, so since I did three over here, I'm going to do four. One, two, three, four. I know that's a lot, but just to differentiate between the previous problem and the problem that we're working on right now. So um, let's see. We did this one already, so now we're on step five. What con conclusion can you make about the true triangle? Basically, they're congruent. These two triangles are congruent by how? How are they congruent? Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. All right. Um, let's see. What else next? Okay, let's continue on with the next step. So, since the triangles are, are congruent, can we say that uh, this one I'm just putting dot because I'm, I'm, I can't do five tick marks right now. That's too much. Are these two sides congruent? KS and ST, are they congruent? Uh, so the answer will be yes, because since the triangles are congruent, corresponding sides must be congruent. So these are congruent by CPCTC. We want to write that one down. And KS is equal to ST by CPCTC. Okay. So that's what they can go about. So they're equal in that case. All right. Um, so we jot that down and they're asking you, what conclusion can you make about the angle KSI and then TSI? All right. So since these two are congruent by CPCTC, why can't the angles congruent? Why can't the angles be congruent? So you would say yes. The angle KSI is equal to the angle TSI because of CPCTC. Since the triangles are already congruent uh, by side angle side, then corresponding parts must be congruent. Corresponding sides must be congruent or corresponding angles must be congruent. So now you can say that uh, this angle and this angle are the same. So I'm going to put um, three tick marks. One, two, three, and then one, two, three. These two angles are also the same. So that will be angle KSI and then TSI. They're the same. Um, okay, so now since, you got to say something about it. Since the two angles are the same and they lie on the same line, they're a linear pair. Because they're a linear pair, it implies that, now when we say that it's a linear pair, it means that they add up to 180 degree, okay? So they add up to 180 degree. So if that's the case, then it implies that, look, if they're on the same line and both of the angles are equal, both of the angles are equal on the same line, the line is 180 degree. So what is 180 divided by 2? 90 degree each. What about 90? What about 90, right? Like, so if they're linear pair, it implies that the angles are right angles. So the middle angle KSI and TSI, the right angles because they're linear pair, they add up to 180. 180 divided by 2 is 90 degrees, therefore they're right angles. Alright, next. The diagonals of a kite are what? The, the, the diagonals of a kite are um, right angles, 
So if the right angles, then they are perpendicular. Right. List any other corresponding points that you think uh, would be congruent. That's it. We have not, okay, these are already done. These are done. We already did this two little thing right here. How about this angle and then this angle? Why can't they be the same? Right? Because if the two uh, triangles are congruent already, then um, in step three, KIE are already congruent uh, to TIE. That means corresponding angles must be congruent. So we can say that angle IKE is equal to angle ITE. All right, and then the next page is this one. Uh, I guess maybe we can start with it, or okay, I'll go to the next clip then. 